This screencast is an introduction to MATLAB, a computational tool used by engineers and available on the computer network of the Massey College of Engineering at Portland State. MATLAB is a product of a company called The MathWorks. They sell this software to engineering and academics throughout the world. There are programs for academics, coursework, supplemental materials, and there's even a student version of MATLAB. I recommend that you don't worry about buying a copy of MATLAB right away. Please get used to the software, try it out, do your homework on the Massey College Network. As you progress through your program, you'll use MATLAB more in different situations, and it may be a good idea to buy it then, but there's no need to buy it just to start. Here's the desktop of the computer in my office, which is connected to the network. The computers in the labs will function pretty much similar to this. Go out of the Start menu, scroll to MATLAB, and launch MATLAB. This may take a bit, depending on network traffic and on whether you've launched MATLAB before. When MATLAB opens, you'll be presented with this window. There is a menu bar or tab bar across the top. There is a series of panes below that, and you may see different computers having different appearances of their MATLAB. That can be controlled by the layout. If you get your windows rearranged in an unfamiliar way, you can always just go to this layout icon and select default, and it will open up MATLAB with this arrangement. We really want to focus on this central pane called the command window. The current folder window to the left gives you information about the directory on the file system where MATLAB is currently operating, and that, that's important. It'll be more important in our next screencast. And off to the right is a workspace that will tell you the value of variables that are entered as you go. Using MATLAB involves typing a lot. It's sort of old school that way. You can type in the command window, just create a variable and give it a value. x equals 7. y equals 5. t equals 30, 13. And then you could combine these values. You can say z equals x divided by y plus t. That result is evaluated immediately. Over here in the workspace, you can see the variables t, x, y, and z. They're presented alphabetically, not in the order in which they were entered. And the values here are shown because when we entered them, we simply typed in the, the formula and hit return. I can recall an old value, one that was previously defined, by typing the, just the name and hitting return. I can also create a variable, let's say s equals z divided by t. If I put a semicolon at the end of this expression, the variable will be created, the expression will be evaluated, but the semicolon suppresses the output. So as you develop more complex sequences of calculations, you may not want to see the intermediate result each time, so you simply end the expression with a semicolon. Over here, that S indeed has been created, and it looks like a value of 1.1077. We can confirm that here by just typing S and return. We can also recall previous expressions by using the up arrow. I hit the up arrow key on my keyboard, and I now can scroll through prior commands. You can see what I might have done earlier uh, in the day. So I can re-enter this command, the Z command, simply by using the up arrow key and recalling it. MATLAB is a short version of matrix laboratory, and every variable in MATLAB is a matrix. So let's do a quick review of matrices. Here is a matrix A and two vectors, X and Y. A matrix is usually designated with a capital letter, and it is an array of, here it looks like dots, but these dots represent numbers. So imagine that these dots are all individual numerical values arranged in this regular array. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows and four columns. The number of rows and columns is up to you or the problem being solved. X here is a, what we call a row vector. It has these elements arranged horizontally. Y is a column vector. It has its elements arranged vertically. We can flip a matrix using the transpose operator. So A is again this seven rows, 
four columns matrix. If I say A transpose, this is not A to the power T, but rather just A with the transpose operator, we flip the rows and columns. Similarly, we can apply transposes to vectors. So if X is a row vector, X transpose is a column vector. If Y is a column vector, Y transpose is a row vector. Matrices and vectors are collections of values, and to refer to individual values, we use row and column indexes. So the matrix A here has some number of rows and columns. The element in row I, column J, is referred to in MATLAB notation with this parentheses notation. A parentheses I, comma J means give me the one element in row i column j. Matrices have two dimensions, vectors have one, so a vector index is a single, either a number or a value inside the parentheses. Note that i could be a number. I could pick x3 and get the third element, or x5. Here I'm indicating it as a variable i. El uh, element i of the y matrix, the y column vector, element i of the y column vector is similarly y of i. So when I look at the subscripting of vectors, I can't tell whether they're rows or columns. I can also refer to an entire column in MATLAB with this colon wildcard. So a colon comma 2 is the entire second column. The, col the colon means all values. So this means all of the rows in column two. Similarly, A3 comma colon says, give me all of the columns in row three. Now that we've introduced vectors, I wanna show you some of the really powerful capabilities of MATLAB. All of these variables that we've just entered are actually matrices. In the case here, we have scalar values, which means there are a matrix or a vector with just one element. Let's do some practice. You don't need to, but I'm going to clear the screen just to remove some of this visual clutter. CLC clears the command window. And just watch along here. X equals lin space 0, 2 times pi. Lin space is a command that creates a vector, and it has two arguments. This is not a subscript, as we just saw. Rather, this is a call to a function called lin space. The first argument is the beginning element. The second argument, 2 pi, is the ending element. And lin space will create 100 values between the two arguments. I'm going to hit return, and the screen will fill with numbers. Now, normally, I don't want that. So instead, what I'm going to do, remember the up arrow, I up arrow, and I put a semicolon at the end. I've created now the vector with these 100 values. I just don't show them on the screen because it's not helpful, really. Try y equals sine of x. What this does is it creates another vector which has the same number of elements as x, but is equal, but the elements are equal to the sine of the elements of x. Sort of makes sense. And if I just type plot x comma y, I create a plot window. So I'm going to put this message away. And this is a very powerful feature of MATLAB. I've entered three commands generating an entire list of numbers, another list of values corresponding to that number, and then I've plotted them. So let's plot another function. We'll put this away. Let's, let's think about polynomials just as another example of how we could evaluate formulas. Here's a polynomial. It's cubic, and the powers of x are organized in decreasing order. That's just the way MATLAB organizes things. Uh, we have four coefficients, c1, c2, c3, c4. And if we were to plot that polynomial between minus 50 and 50, it would look like that. So let's create that plot. There's a, a number of ways we can organize this. I'm going to clear the screen here. I'm going to store the coefficients in another vector, c equals. And to create a vector without using lin space, I use square brackets. So the first entry is 0 0.001. 
the second entry or second element is 0 0.015, third is minus 1.1, and the fourth is 0 0.6. So this square bracket notation defines a vector, and the way I've entered it will create a row vector. So I'm just going to hit enter, and it will echo that back to the screen, and C shows up in our workspace as one of the variables we've just created. I want to plot this on the domain uh, from x equal uh, minus 50 to 50. So I'm going to create use lin space again. x equals lin space minus 50, comma 50. I'm not going to forget the semicolon this time because I don't want to see all that. I'm going to evaluate the polynomial in a way that makes an error first, and then I'll fix the error because this is a common error that uh, new MATLAB users make. C1 is the first element times x cubed plus c2 times x squared. I'm putting some extra spaces here just to make it easier to see. c3 times x plus c4. This is going to create an error. The error message says incorrect dimensions for raising a matrix to a power. To perform element-wise matrix powers, use dot caret. So basically, x cubed since x is a row vector, I can't cube a row vector. It just mathematically that's not defined. I want to I want to instead cube each element in x. So I'll correct that incorrect formula. Use the up arrow key. I'll put a semicolon at the end while I'm here. And all I need to do is come over and put a period there, a period there. I don't need a period here because a scalar times a vector is a legal operation, and I can add a scalar to it. MATLAB understands that if I add a scalar to a vector, I'm going to replicate that scalar for all the elements of the vector. So we've got that, and now I'm going to plot x, comma y, and we have our polynomial. Pretty simple. And this approach, this approach to creating and evaluating formulas is very handy because I can make those vectors arbitrarily large or small. I could come up here and reevaluate lin space. Let's just for because I can, I could make 10,000 entries. Now, this won't show up on the screen. It'll be the resolution will be so fine, but I can create a vector of 10,000 up arrow y up arrow plot and the plot is redrawn in this window and it looks the same because we we can't see 10,000, but MATLAB doesn't care as long as I'm using the correct syntax. It will operate on a vector of five elements or 50 elements or 5,000 elements. There is, of course, a practical limit, uh, which is the memory of your computer, but modern computers today will um, have, have quite a capacity and won't be exceeded by this. Let's do one more formula. Let's look at this decaying sine wave. This is a common signal in resonant systems that have damping. So I let's say I hit a bell with a, a mallet, and this is a bad bell with a lot of damping. The blue curve represents the amplitude of the vibrations of this object, a, a bell or a, a possibly a, a rod or something else, a spring attached to a mass. The blue line represents this transient response, an oscillation that decays over time. And up at the top here, y equals e to the minus a t times sine of bt, that is a formula that represents the curve that you see there. So we need to remember that a is minus 2 and b is 20. And we'll make this plot. I'm going to leave this plot window here and show you a little trick. Uh, once again, CLC, totally unnecessary, but just to help us focus a little bit. So we're going to plot, we're going to create a, a vector t equals lin space 0 comma 2 and then oh, uh, uh, we have our constants a equal to minus 2 and I can put it on the same line b equals 20 and I've created these two values. Um, I now will get our sine a damp sine exp so the exp function is how we do e to the minus something or e to the plus something and uh, there's a tooltip pops up and we can find out more about the exp function it's a times t times sine of b times t 
And I'm going to get another error here. Let's see if you can guess what it's caused by. Put a semicolon. Once again, I have an error caused by this matrix multiplication problem. If I hit an up arrow, I come in and I put a dot between these two. So exp is a vectorized function, meaning that if you give it a vector of arguments, it creates the e to each of the values in those that structure a matrix or a vector. Similarly, the sine is a vectorized function. So the problem with matrix uh, multiplication here is that exp at is a vector and sine of bt is a vector, and they're not compatible by the rules of linear algebra. So if I put a dot in, I do element wise, and now I can do plot x comma, or sorry, t comma y. When I do this and there's an open plot window, MATLAB simply redraws the plot. But there's a little trick. If I repeat the plot command, but before I plot, I put close all. This is a, a, a trick I do all the time. Close all. It will close all available plot windows. And then when the plot command is executed, it will open a new window. That has the effect of drawing the plot on the top. Um, I could make this window bigger and inspect it, look at things. But notice right here this top first peak is a bit it's a bit ragged so the plot command doesn't make a smooth curve it just connects this default uh, use of the plot command simply connects a bunch of points with straight line segments let's have a look to see how that works if I replace this with plot uh, period it replaces the plot of what looks like a line with a bunch of dots so the plot command, the third argument, tells you something about the kind of symbols or line styles that are used. So the problem here is when this function is varying rapidly up and down, not on, on the x direction, but up and down, it's a little jagged. So I can do the same trick I did before. Let's evaluate t at a lot more points. So let's say we don't need to go to a th very large number, say 500, oops, not point, comma, comma, 500, and up arrow to the sine, sorry, the uh, e to the minus at sine bt, and now when I close all and plot ty, I see I have many more points, which makes the function look smooth. There's a lot to learn here with the various commands in MATLAB, but you can hopefully see that one of the key ideas is that you enter commands in the command window. When you use the equal sign and assign a result to a variable name, you create the variable and they appear here in our workspace. The workspace is basically a list of all the variables you have uh, created during the session. There's ways to clear that, but um, in any case, you're, you're storing uh, variable definitions but the order in which you execute them is what matters. So I can do the up arrow command. If I do this, let's say make it 5,000 and hit return, the plot doesn't change. So think about it. This is not like Excel. If I were to change a cell value, then all the other cells in the spreadsheet change. MATLAB executes things sequentially. So all I've done is increase the number of elements in T. So if I were to redo the plot, MATLAB would bark at me and say, no, you can't do that because T and Y are not the same length. Over here, if I look at T, there are 5,000 elements and Y has only 500. So the order of execution matters. Uh, I created a new T, and then I tried to plot T versus Y. I have to reevaluate Y, and then I can plot T with no trouble. We'll continue these MATLAB demonstrations with uh, more screencasts, but right now I wanted to give you a sense how you can use MATLAB. Uh, basically, we're using it sort of as a plotting calculator. We type in commands, we store results in variables, and then we plot those variables. There's a lot more to using MATLAB, and we'll explore that in future screencasts.